uh, I'll just do a little bit of a review here. Now, first of all, when we talk about loans, we're normally talking about generally one of two types of loans. Uh, the first type of loan would be what's considered a short-term loan, which is usually a loan that lasts about a year or maybe even five, but generally it's considered a pretty standard loan, such as a car loan, where the interest rate on it is fixed over a period of time and you make a standard payment on it and eventually it will get paid off. It's relatively short term. Other types of loans out there are, tend to be longer term loans. Mortgages are a classic example of a longer term loan. The only real difference between a mortgage and a regular loan is the fact that the mortgage has some piece of property or some real property, what we call in law, real property attached to it, such as a house or a building and that sort of thing. But the concepts for both of them are exactly the same. So what do we need to be able to do is to think about how we pay that loan off. And then we also got to think about how much of the payment that we're making at any given point in time is interest and how much of it is repaying the principal. Okay. So we really need to, those are the things that from an accounting point of view that we often consider. So uh, when we, when we think about paying off a loan, we can determine, first of all, what the payment is on that loan. And the payment on the loan is derived using the present value formula. And I have it right here. So find the amount of the payment using the present value formula. You're looking for PMT, but you have all the other information. The present value is the amount that you're borrowing. The interest rate right here, the number of payments, that's in the end there, it looks a little bit fuzzy, but it's uh, to the power of minus n. And so we need to know those sorts of things. And if we got all of the other information, we should be able to put it into the equation and calculate the payment. And we do. In fact, in any loan, we can use this particular formula here in order to calculate the payment. Okay. So we make that payment. And that payment consists of two individual components, the interest component and the principal component. Okay. And so effectively, here we are in a loan, let's say it's a 60 month loan, we're paying it off over 60 months, we're paying it monthly, and every single month we pay $300. So every single month we pay exactly the same amount of money, $300, but every single month the amount of interest that is in, in built in that $300 goes down. As we pay the loan off, there's less and less principal that we have, so there's less and less interest. and the amount of payment that we make on the actual loan itself, the repayment, goes up. So we need to be able to calculate them for each stage along the way. That's really what we're doing. So we need to be able to, to determine the interest. And really, interest on a loan is just the principal or the outstanding balance of the loan multiplied by the interest rate for that period, so the periodic interest rate. And we can calculate that. So it's the interest portion, is the Periodic interest rate times the principal balance. The principal then must be the difference between what the payment is and the amount of interest. So the difference between, let's say you're paying $300 a month, you calculate the interest to be $100. So the principal repayment must be $200 in that case. So we can put all that into a loan amortization table. And the loan amortization pay table typically, a typical, not every one, a typical loan amortization table consists of these basic columns. The actual payment number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, through to 60, let's say in a 60 month loan. The beginning balance at the beginning of the period. The actual amount of the payment, which is fixed right through the entire loan. The interest portion of that payment, the principal portion of that payment, and then the ending balance. And really the ending balance is a function of the beginning balance less the principal portion that was paid, okay? And that will give you your ending balance. And the ending balance for one period becomes the beginning balance for the next period. So we can actually see this drawn out in a schedule. So what I've done here is I got this little, I'll call it an animated schedule. Let me bring this up full bore here. 
Um, so we, we go and we calculate, for example, if you borrow $1,000 for five years, and let's assume one payment a year. Let's keep it really simple for the purposes of this example. One payment a year, 10% annual interest. So what we've got is really five payments starting to pay off this loan. One payment a year, five year loan. $1,000. So we start with $1,000. That's our beginning balance. We calculate the payment using the present value formula. Again, I've shown over here how that's done. It's 163.78, whatever. And so that that uh, 263.78 sorry so that gets paid every single month so you see i've just filled out that column and the interest portion is just taking the principal amount 1000 and multiplying it by the periodic interest rate now this is a yearly loan and a yearly interest so the period is one year so 1000 times 0 0.10 would give you a hundred dollars so the difference between the hundred dollars then that we pay in interest and the 263 that you actually paid would give you 163.76 as the principal portion. This 163.76 would get paid against the $1,000 and effectively leave you with a balance of 836. This gets repeated right down through. In fact, I've got the whole thing filled out here. I only have the mechanicals up in the first two columns, but the whole thing is figured out. And what you're gonna see is that the end balance goes down, 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 right down to zero or round numbers to zero. We're gonna have, uh, you're gonna end up with some rounding errors. So this number very unlikely will come out exactly to zero, but very close to zero, okay? So you can see here, what we've done is with a 263.80 payment for five years, we can pay off a thousand dollar loan that turns out a 10% interest in the various and you'll notice that the interest starts at 100 goes down to 83 65 and so on the interest is declining because the principal is getting repaid so as a result there's not as much loan to borrow against so you're going to see for example the principal portion the opposite happens we pay 163 to start with towards the principal and first payment but as we move down you'll see our payment goes up as we produce more and more as we pay off more and more loan less lent interest so more portion so this this is the the pattern that you have now it doesn't matter if it's five years 500 years 50 payments 500 payments the mechanics of how, in, how you do this are exactly the same you can use spreadsheets to do this load uh lotus well excel has a calculator to uh has a uh, sheet to do this uh, you can find the template already set up um, any of them have this, you can type it in, you'll find online calculators that will do exactly this as well. So that's the amortization table, okay? That's the first thing that we wanna do. And we did some examples. I won't go through the examples again today, but again, this kind of exemplifies how it actually works. Okay, so now, one of the things we did the other day, I just wanted to go to this problem right here. We did problem number one, Monica. And she bought a TV, and it was 15% compounded monthly. And so we constructed an amortization schedule. So here's the amortization schedule, okay? So that's just the same sort of thing we just ran through. The one I wanted to talk about today was, let's say, let's say you're an accountant for this company, or maybe Monica, you're Monica's accountant. It doesn't matter. You're asked, someone asked, maybe Monica asked you, how much do I owe after three payments? Okay, so you look at this table here, and if you look at this table, you'll go down payment three. Okay, let's go across here. $509.32, Monica, that's how much you owe. Okay, well, how did you calculate that? Well, we read it off the table. We have this uh, uh, amortization schedule that shows every single payment and the balance at the end of every single payment period. Okay, great. But let's assume you don't have this done. You don't have this done. You may have a situation, for example, where you don't have a table in front of you and someone says, okay, we got a, a 50 payment. Uh, we got a schedule where there's 50 or 60 payments. I want to know how much I owe on my car loan or house loan or any loan as of this week. Someone says to you that, okay? We got to be able to know then how to calculate the balance, which are shown here in this table, how to calculate this balance 
at any point in time without having the amortization table. So I'm just going to pick on this one here. Now, just in order to illustrate the point, payment three, Monica, she owes $509.32 according to the amortization schedule. Let's assume that we're into a situation where we want to find out the balance on the loan at the third payment period, but we don't want to have a, or we don't have an amortization table. Let's presume that that table is not there and you, someone asks you, What's the balance of the loan after the third payment? So we can use one of two methods. There are two methods, okay? One is called the retrospective method, and the other method is called a prospective method, okay? It sounds more complicated than it actually is. But here is an illustration of the method, okay? Look at the timeline. Here's the timeline along here. And let's assume that you want to know the balance at point number three, and which is exactly what we want to do here. We want to find out what is the timeline, what is the balance at point number three. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, if we, if we look at the front end of it, we'll call it the front end here, from zero to three, we can use the retrospective method. And what that does is a backward-looking looks at the past to find the future values of a couple of things, the payments themselves and the original amount of the loan. So let's, let's take a look at this retrospective method, okay? The outstanding balance of a loan is the future value of the original debt. So she went and borrowed some money. Monica went and borrowed some money, $1,000 in the case of our example. And we want to know what the balance is at the third payment, okay? So we're going to use the retrospective method in order to use that. So what the retrospective does is it takes the future value of the original debt minus the future value of the payments made so far. So effectively, we're only looking at this, this point up to the third year. So in mathematical speak, this... What I've written here is the formula, but let's turn it into a mathematical formula. Future value of, the value of the original debt is calculated using the future value formula, which is PV bracket 1 plus I to the N. That's that part. Minus, there's the minus sign, the future value of the payments made so far. So in the payments made so far is the present value, uh, sorry, the future value uh, formula for a series of payments, which is right here, PMT, one plus I to the N minus one over I, okay? So what we're doing is we're, we're using two of these formulas, this one minus this one, in order to calculate the value at year three. So let's take a look. Here's the retrospective method. Here's the formula, same thing, but let's, let's pull out some of the data. The loan was $1,000. The payment was 174.03 based on our calculation of the payment that we did earlier on. The number of periods that we're talking about is three. We're at the end of the third period. The interest rate, according to the um, original problem for Monica, problem one was 15% uh, per year, a 12 Pay, uh, 12 compounds a year monthly, basically. So what we've got is this, uh, the interest rate, the periodic interest rate is 15 divided by 12, which is 0 0.0125 in decimal format, okay? Which is what we need for the formula. So what we're going to do is take this bit of stuff here, and we're going to plug it into these formulas. So what I've done down here is I've plugged it into the formula. So we got 1,000, bracket, 1 plus 0 0.0125, to the power of n, which is three, there's this, minus the payment, 174.03, times one plus 0 0.0125 to the power of three minus one, divided by 0125. If you did the math on that, which I've done, if you did the math on these formulas, you would get 103.797 minus 528.64. This one here is 1037.97. This one here is 528.64. 
10397 minus 528.64 is $509.33. So effectively, what this retrospective method has done is calculated the balance of the loan at the third period. Now let's just check to make sure that was right. Well, according to our table, our, our um, um, amortization table, hey, what do you know? Same number, 50932. So effectively, we don't have to do this table if we can use this retrospective method. Okay, fair enough. So that's really all there is to it. Now, easy for me to say, you need to do some examples of this in order to really get a good handle on it, okay? Because it sounds easier than it actually is. You've got to plug the numbers in, figure out the numbers and these sorts of things. But this is the mechanics of how it works. You've got to take the present value of the original amount of how much was borrowed effectively and then, or the future value of the original amount and the future value of the stream. So we had we take one, subtract the other, and way to go. That's retrospective method. Now, as I said at the beginning, there are two methods. There's the retrospective method for calculating how much is owed, but there's also something called a perspective method. And the perspective method is a forward-looking, looks into the future, and uses present value format. Now, the perspective method is easier. The mechanics of calculating it are easier, but it does exactly the same thing. Let's go take a look at the perspective method. So again, exact same problem, okay? We're looking for how much Monica owes at the third year. So what we need to do is we need to say, okay, well, what do we gotta use here? The present value of the outstanding payments. So let's calculate the present value of the outstanding payments. That is how many more payments after year three. And really, you know, if we think about a loan, what you owe, after you've made that last payment, what you what remains to be owed, what the payments that the string of payments that you are obliged to pay into the future. In this case, for example, Monica has paid three years of her payments. She has two more to do. So the the future value of those those future payments, if we were to take the present value of those future payments, we should come up with how much is owing on the loan. So Effectively, we're going to take the present value equals PMT 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus I minus N over I. So let's take the math of that. So again, we've got our loan is $1,000. That's the present value. The payment was $174.03. We've calculated that. We're into the third payment. We want to know what it was the third payment. And again, the interest. So what we're going to do is plug the numbers into this. So the Present value is payment, 174.03, times 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.0125 to the minus 3 over 0 .10, 0 0.0125. We do the math on that, and we get 174.03 times 2.9266. This will give you 2.9266. Both of those get her, what do you know? 509.33. So effectively, what that's done is it's found the value of the amount that was owing after the third payment. And let's check it against the table. Yeah, exactly the same amount. So effectively, the perspective method just takes the string of payments that are remaining to be paid, brings them back to what are they worth now, okay? So it takes that present value. So the perspective method and the respect retrospective method do exactly the same thing. It's two formulas. You don't have to use both of them. You only need to use one, really. So we really got three ways now to figure it out. We can use the amortization table. We can use the retrospective method, or we can use the perspective method to find out how much is owing at any given point in time. Okay. So that's that's effectively what we're dealing with. There is trying to get a good handle on that. Any questions? I'll just do a couple more little examples here, and uh, then we'll look at uh, we'll look at an example. Okay, um, so here is an example using the retrospective method, and this is a full problem. I've just taken it right from the book. This is in your textbook. A fifty-seven thousand dollar. Let me put on my glasses because I can't see. Fifty-seven thousand mortgage loan. At 6.9% compounded monthly, requires monthly payments during its 20-year amortization period. So the good thing is, is we look at this, and that's a monthly compounding and a monthly amortization period. 
you know, so that that's good. That's a simple annuity. Way to go. Let's calculate the monthly payment, round it to the nearest cent, and calculate the balance after five years. Okay, so first thing we need to do is find the payment. In order to find the payment, we just use the present value formula, as I've said. So there it is. We are looking for PMT, so we've got all the other information. Present value is $57,000. The interest is 6.9% compounded as the annual, but it's compounded monthly, so we've got to take that divided by 12. That comes out to 0.575% or 0.00575 as a decimal per month. And the total number we want to find out uh, uh, after five years. So uh, we gotta we gotta take a look there. Oh, we'll get down to that. So this is this is a twenty year loan. So twenty year, twelve times twenty would be the total length of the loan. Uh, twelve times twenty is two hundred forty. And we plug all that into the formula, as we've done here. The PMT, the payment, will come out as um, $438.51. Okay, so that's that's effectively how you calculate payment. Should be pretty straightforward. Just plug that in there. Now, we're asked to calculate the balance five after five years using the retrospective method. So five years now, we're dealing with months here. So five years is really 60 months or the 60th payment. We want to find out what is the value of the loan at the 60th payment, okay? So what we do is we're going to use the retrospective method. And as you recall, the retrospective method takes the future value of the original amount, 57000 and subtracts the future value of the series of payments that were used up to that point in time. So the future value... Calculation, here's PV, 1 plus I to the power of N. We've taken 57,000. We've put 1.00575. 007575 is the interest rate to the N, which is 60 months. Uh, so that's the first bit. The second bit looks at the string of payments. So we're saying where's was $438.51 was the payment. We run the, run, run the rest of the numbers in there, and we will get a total of... 80,403.94 for this first part and 31,313 for the second part. 80 minus the 31 comes to $49,090. So effectively what we're saying is that after five years or 60 months, there will be $49,000, $49,090.86 $49, remaining on that loan. So that's effectively how that is done using the retrospective method. Using the perspective method, and keep in mind now when we think about the perspective method, what we're looking for is uh, the um, just a simple calculation here where we're going to take all of the payments that are made after the 60th payment and bring them back to find the present value of them. So we use this formula right here. We plug the numbers into that formula, and we get $49,090. Notice, same. So that's that perspective and retrospective method. Now, I have a couple of examples here. And really, I've done those um, somewhere. I don't know where the videos are. The videos are here somewhere. I'm afraid that I'm going to get stuck on one. But you'll see, if I'm not mistaken, maybe I moved them up and I shouldn't have. So we've got some exercises there. And I think that, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the video shows the workout of those. But regardless, if the workout is there on the video or not, because I have a little doubt in my mind that I have it there, um, I have them written, basically the mechanics of it written out here for the morning too. I'd like you to take a look at that. Okay, that would be that would be something that we certainly have to uh, to look at. Okay, uh, so I, I won't cover those off now. Uh, I just want to introduce this topic for next week. So Monday, I'll talk about this, okay? Uh, just to introduce this topic today. Mortgages are a type of loan. We talked about residential mortgages in Canada as another type of loan. And the thing is, you know, if you're working in the banking industry or, you know, if, if you're a business and you have a mortgage, you're going to be asking yourself, how much do I owe? 
besides calling up your bank and asking, you want to understand how they calculate it, we want to be able to do the same thing. We want to be able to mechanically do that. Well, the first thing is you have to know is that we know mortgages are long-term investments, but mortgages are kind of neat because they have a um, interest-bearing schedule for most mortgages. Now, there's different types of mortgages, but generally a mortgage, what a mortgage does is the interest on a mortgage is normally compounded semi-annually, two times a year. And because of that, that's two compounds a year. And normally in your mortgage, you pay it once a month. So what we got is compounding is semi-annually and the payments are monthly. That is a general annuity. We know that that is an ordinary general annuity, meaning that we had to do calculate this I-2. Remember, we had to do the calculation of I-2. So that's exactly what you need to do with a, a mortgage is to do the exact same things we've just done above, but we're going to need to consider it as a general annuity. So we got to get a value of C and a value of I-2. And we know that the value of C is the number of compounds per year divided by the number of payments per year. That will give you the value of C. And then to calculate the I-2, it's 1 plus I to the power of C minus 1. We've done a few examples in the past of that and on your assignment. So effectively, when we have a mortgage then, we have to get a revised version of the interest per period or the periodic interest rate, rate interest rate you, uh, using this calculation or to calculate I2. That then gets used to calculate as we've just done with the uh, with the retrospective method. This then can use in this formula right here, a present value formula in order to calculate the value. So effectively, if what we're really saying is, look, a mortgage is no different than the other loan, except that it's an annual general annuity. And we have to revise the interest rate to a periodic interest rate using the formula that we've talked about lots in the past. Uh, that then is going to be used in order to use the retrospective method in order to calculate the value of the amount owing on the mortgage at any point in time. So the balance at any point in time is the future value of the amount borrowed at the reference point in time, less the future value of the stream of payments to the reference point in time, which is exactly what we've done for the retrospective method. This is the formula, and this is the formula that we've just finished. So effectively, when you're doing a mortgage, what a mortgage requires you to do is just that extra one step, which is to calculate the uh, I-2. So here's a little example, and then we'll be done for today. This, a $50,000 mortgage loan, is written with a 20-year amortization period, three-year term, and an interest rate of 4.5% compounded semi-annually. Payments are made monthly. Now, what, what this means, because terminology here, just to be clear, it's a mortgage, 20-year amortization period. That means you have 20 years to pay off the mortgage. The three-year term is the time at which you need to renegotiate the interest, okay? So mortgages are longer than a year. They're probably five, one, 25 years. Could be different lengths of time. But the fact of the matter is, is the bank is so uncertain of the future, they're not going to allow you to say, okay, here's a good interest rate and stick with that interest rate forever. You might not want to do that here over the course of the loan, that is not forever. Um, so what happens is a mortgage, the interest rate gets renewed every so many years. So what what mortgages tend to have is a renewal point on them in two, one year, two years, three years, five years, depends on the actual mortgage. Different mortgages will offer different packages, but let's assume this one here gets renewed after three years. So we're going to look for what is the balance at the end of the three-year term. That's effectively what we're looking here for. And B, the size of the payments upon renewal uh, for a five-year term at 4%. So basically, we're going to say, how much is this mortgage going to be paid off in the three years to get to there? So what we're doing then is taking the bits of information, present value is $50,000, which is the mortgage, 
The number of periods, well, it's a 20 year mortgage. 12 payments a year or 12 per year is 240. The interest rate on it is 4.5%. We know it's compounded semi-annually. That gets split in two, it'd be 2.25. And the value of C, which is 12, 2 over 12. So the number of compounds divided by the number of interest periods will give that 0.16 uh, repeating. That just means 16666. You got to take that value of C, put it into the I2 formula, which we've done here, and we get a new value of this is the new periodic value, which is 0 0.0037. We then take that and we throw that in our formula. This is the formula, the typical formula we just looked at back here. Okay. So it's a future value formula. So we know that we've got 50,000 is the uh, value of the loan, the present, uh, present value formula, I should say, um, the payment. We'll plug the value in for the revised version of I, so it's one plus that, minus how many periods there are, 240. And uh, that there, that will give you the amount of the payment. So we can calculate what is the payment of the mortgage, okay? So there's the monthly payment for the mortgage. Now, then, in order to find out what the value of it is after three years, we got to figure out what the balance after 36 payments is. Well, at three years, 12, 12 months a year times three, which is the future value of 50,000 after 36 months and the future value of 36 payments at already made. So these are the two things that we got to do. So we're going to take the future value of 50, we're going to plug it into that formula and that will give us that. Future value of the 36 payments, we're going to put that into that formula. And that's that. That minus that is $45,024. So effectively, after three years, this $50,000 mortgage, you will have paid down less than $5,000. You'll have a balance of $45,000 left at the end. And part B says the renewal is handled the same way as new mortgage whose original principal equals balance. So effectively, the present value of the new mortgage becomes the present value or the, the value at the end of the period of the old mortgage or the old version of it. So that transfers to there. There's uh, 17 years left in it. So the total number of periods is 204. The interest rate and the new mortgage is uh, 4%, and it's a semi-annual. It's 2% per. We calculate the value of C, which is 2 over 12, 0.16. Get the value of I2, I2. There it is right there. And we can actually plug that into the formula in order to calculate the revised payment. This is not hard to do. It looks intimidating. It looks more intimidating than it is. The only way that you can really reduce the intimidation though is to do some examples. So what I've done is I got a batch of examples here. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I have three and five exercises done. So what I'd like you to do is take a look at them.